Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. I promise I won't tear it before you're too long tonight. But we gonna see what's down a rabbit hole on the Whitney Houston story. Y'all ready? Whitney Houston was born in Newark, New Jersey on August 9th in 1963. Whitney Houston's father, John Russell Houston, he was known as being an army serviceman. And he was also known as being an entertainment executive. Whitney Houston's mama, Sissy Houston. She was known as being a famous gospel singer. And Sissy Houston is also the aunt of the famous singer, Dionne Warwick. So that makes Whitney Houston and Dionne Warwick cousins. Whitney Houston, she also has two brothers by the name of Michael Houston and former basketball player, Gary Garland. Whitney Houston learned vocal technique and the art of performing at an early age. She learned this from her mother, Sissy Houston. Whitney Houston would go certain places with Sissy Houston, okay, and listen to her sing and things like that. Sometimes she would go on the road with her mother, Sissy Houston. So she was always hearing her mama sing. Every time she was with her, her mama was singing, so she, she got a chance to hear that. And sometime her and her mother, they sung together. Whitney Houston also learned vocal technique from other family members and friends that she was around as she grew up. So, you know, being able to perform and, and belch a song out, it came natural to her. Because singing run in her blood, okay? It ran in her bloodline. Sissy Houston... Whitney Houston's mama, she made sure that she brought her kids to church on a regular basis. The church that they attended was called New Hope Baptist Church. And New Hope Baptist Church is where Whitney Houston began singing, singing her motherfucker her ass off. Whitney Houston was in a choir. And when it was her turn to sing a solo, y'all know what a solo is? When you sing the song by yourself and behind you, you got the choir backing you up. She would bring tears, little Whitney Houston. When little Whitney Houston would open up her mouth and start singing. Listen to me, y'all. She would bring tears to the people in the congregation. She would bring tears to their eyes because she sung so beautiful. You ever heard somebody, you know, sing a song? Some people can sing a song and they can bring tears to your eyes. Uh, listen to me tonight. As Whitney Houston got older, before she became a household name in the music industry, she used to be a successful young model. Some people didn't know that. They just thought, you know, Whitney Houston used to sing and things like that. Uh-uh. Whitney Houston was a successful young model. Honey, them white folks back in the day, they was looking for Whitney Houston to be in all types of they fashion, you know, fashion magazines and all types of shit. Okay? They said, where is that little natural face, little girl Whitney Houston? Beautiful, killing the motherfucking model industry. Catch that on flick. I want y'all to know this. And when Whitney Houston, she a model for these, you know, white people, they white catalogs and shit like that. And, and Whitney Houston was known as being one of the first African-American women to appear on the cover of the Seventeen magazine. The first, one of the first African-American women to appear on this Seventeen magazine. You know, back then it was very racial. Okay, very, very racial people and stuff like that. So for you to appear on a magazine on the cover 
You had to be a natural face, cute faced and model to them. Okay. I said to them, come on, let's go ahead and go through the story tonight. After all the time Whitney Houston saw her mother, Sissy Houston performing, you know, Sissy Houston, Whitney's mother, she also used to sing background for Elvis Presley. So as she began to see, you know, her mother performing and things like that, it was finally her turn to perform Whitney Houston's turn. She says, shit, I've been doing this for a while. Now it's my turn now. Okay. So when Whitney Houston was 19 years of age, she was discovered in a nightclub. She was discovered by a man by the name of Clive Davis. Everybody know who Clive Davis is. When it come to music, everybody know who Clive Davis's rotten ass is. When Clive Davis, he heard Whitney Houston singing. Okay, he said, who is this sexy little natural face little girl? Then she got a beautiful voice. Honey, as soon as he heard Little Whitney Houston singing Clive Davis. He signed her immediately. He took no time. Y'all know how them powder, some of them powder face fuckers is this. Oh, we got to get her right now. We got to put her out of me. Okay, that's how it was. I said he signed her immediately. Immediately. And Clive Davis, he took Whitney Houston's career to the next level. Whitney Houston started out as a gospel singer. That's how they do, right? I'm going to sing for the Lord. I'm going to sing for God. I'm going to sing for Jehovah, whatever. Okay. And then automatically they just switch over to the motherfucking rhythm and blues. So she started out as a gospel singer and Clive Davis turned Whitney Houston into a pop star. That's right. He turned her into a pop star. And the rest was motherfucking history. The rest was history, y'all. Y'all ready to go deeper down this rabbit hole tonight? I told you I won't go tear before you too long tonight. Come on, let's do it. Whitney Houston, some of y'all may not have known this, and some of y'all have, but Whitney Houston, she was already a blood sacrifice as soon as she signed the record deal with Clive Davis. Listen to me close. I said she was already a blood sacrifice. Soon as she signed the, the motherfucking blood, the motherfucking contract. Uh-oh, they already knew. Later on, we're going to get some blood from this one. Uh-huh. We're going to get some blood from this one right here. Clive Davis already knew this. He knew as soon as he signed Whitney Houston, she was going to make him millions of dollars. Don't get it twisted. Clive Davis knew that. I hate to say it like this, but I'm just being real. Whitney Houston was Clive Davis's puppet. Okay, you know how they, what, have the strings on the puppet and they able to make the puppet do whatever? Guess what? That they want that puppet to do. And that's the relationship between Whitney Houston and Clive Davis. And Clive Davis was Whitney Houston's, guess what? Slave master. I said Clive Davis was like the master. And Whitney Houston was like the beautiful little slave girl. Yes, massa. And what do the master always do to the pretty little black slave girls? Uh-huh, you already know it. They have sex with them. Sometimes what they, they do, and we're going to say it like this, they rape them. Clive Davis manipulated Whitney Houston. She was a little older, but she still was young-minded. You can be older with a young mind. I see it all the time. Shit, there's people still in their 60s and 70s and they young-minded in a motherfucker. It's already, it's all, I'm going to say this, it's all right to be childlike. It's the difference between it being childlike and being just a, a, ch a motherfucking childish motherfucking individual. Don't know how to pay your bills on time. Okay, and I can go on and on and on. But one thing about, uh, and you just listen to whatever but somebody tell you, okay, gullible. That's how Whitney was when it came to Clive Davis. 
That's why I said he manipulated her. And Whitney Houston, he didn't see, she didn't even see Clive Davis was manipulating her until she got a little bit older. And when she began to get older, she start to see some shit with that motherfucker Clive Davis. Okay? She start to see some shit with his old ass. Right before Whitney Houston died, they made sure, they made sure that that Oprah introduced her, okay, and had an interview with her and shit. Every she, time she something that happened ass. to somebody, what did they and do? That's right. They put them on the Oprah show. Motherfuckers end up sacrificing. She, she interviewed they Soon ass. after they go on the Oprah show. They they put Whitney Houston in, in different movies. The main movie that they put her in before Whitney Houston died, what was the movie called? Sparkle. They put her in that Sparkle movie. Okay? They was doing all kinds of shit to do. For Whitney Houston, making her think it, it was a gift for her. Oh, we giving you a gift when really with the mafia do they kiss you before they kill you. Huh? Put it together. They was doing all time types of shit for Whitney Houston. Why? Not for no special treatment. Some folks already knew that she was going to be the what? Next blood sacrifice. Huh? Don't get it twisted, y'all, because some of these people know that these some of these people are about to die or be sacrificed before it happened. Whew, you better understand what I'm saying to you the fuck a night. They be already knowing the shit. But they got to what? Put their finger in front of their mouth to tell you what? Shh. You can't say nothing, though. Why? Because it's part of the game. This is how the game go down. Somebody asked me, they say, well, so, so, madam, what about Bobby Brown, so, so? They say, what about Bobby Brown? And I'm going to ask you a question. And then I'm going to tell you about Bobby Brown. But let me ask you this question. I know almost everybody know about arranged marriages. You hear about arranged marriages in the industry all the time. Y'all hear about this, so y'all know about this type of stuff. Y'all know about this. Arranged marriages. Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown's marriage was a arranged motherfucker marriage. Uh, let me explain myself the fuck a night. I said it was a, a arranged marriage. And Bobby Brown, he knew what the fuck was going on. But Whitney Houston, guess what? She didn't know she was part of the game. Huh? Hear me tonight. I said Whitney Houston didn't know that she she was part of the game. She didn't know what was she didn't know that she was part of a, a arranged marriage. She didn't know what was up. I'm going to give y'all some homework because y'all know this is what I did. I'm going to give y'all some homework. And later on, when I get done with this video, I want y'all to go do the homework for y'all self. I want y'all to go look it up. I want y'all to go look it up and see this. The day Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston got married. And the day that they divorced equals up to the what? The motherfucking three, six. Equal up to the three, six. I told you the proof is always in the motherfucking pudding. You just got to know how it look. Okay. You got to know how it look to be able to look it up. I'm trying to teach y'all the fuck a night. It's our motherfucker. Okay. But the three, six, you can see it. The day they got married and the day that they divorced equals to the fucking three, six. Let's go a little bit deeper. The reality show. Being Bobby Brown. Y'all y'all remember the, the, the reality show that Bobby Brown had. It's called Being Bobby Brown. When you look at the first episode that was aired. Go look at the first episode that was aired. Being Bobby Brown. And you look at the last episode that was aired. Look at the date. The date that it was aired. The first time it was aired. And the, the date that it stopped. The date that they took it out for air. And it equals to the what? The fuck of 3 6. I told y'all I got homework the fuck a night. I said I got homework tonight, y'all. It equals up to the 3 6. And I want to ask you this question Why was the reality show called Being Bobby Brown? When Whitney Houston, she was more famous than Bobby Brown was. See, motherfucker, if any damn thing, gaga, it should have been called Being Whitney Houston. Okay? Now, now, go look and see who the producers was of that show. And then you will answer your own question. 
Okay. Huh, you answer your own question. Why would that show was called being Bobby Brown? She was more famous than him. If anything, they should have called it Bobby and Whitney. Okay. Because Bobby Brown knew what he had to do. And he did what he had to do. He played the motherfucking game and he had got some motherfucking gifts out the motherfucking whole scenario. I say he got some gifts out of the fucking arranged marriage. I better listen what I'm saying tonight. Because Bobby Brown, I said he knew what he had to do when he played the game and he did it. And please believe that that rabbit hole right there, it go deeper. It go deeper than what you would ever know. This was an arranged marriage. As soon as Bobby Brown left Whitney Houston, what happened? I'll let you think about it. I'll let you think about it. I'll let you think, think about it. Listen to me. When he left Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown got married, remarried, I should say, and he had some kids. And not too long after, after he did that, after he got remarried and had some kids, what happened? His ex-wife, Whitney Houston, and his daughter, Bobby Christina, they end up being what? Dead. End up just dying. Dying. Y'all better see what's really going on. That wasn't just a fucking coincidence. Huh. Bobby Brown know what's up. But let's go even deeper. Everybody who lived in that house with Whitney Houston, Okay, everybody who lived in a house with Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown right now are dead, sleeping in their grave. Whitney Houston, Bobby Christina, and did y'all forget about Nick Gordon? He used to stay with them. Bobby Brown still walking around this bitch. I said, Bobby Brown still here. Walking around this bitch like he don't know shit. To. Huh? And he know what the fucker is going on. Y'all better learn how to put it together. I said the industry that these our people are working in is a dangerous field to fucking play in. You better believe me. Somebody say, oh, well, so-so, you be telling us about the blood sacrifice. Yeah, I tell us about our people because some people look at our people and don't, they don't think that they can ever do such a thing. So right now we're just calling these things out to show y'all that that's not the industry that y'all want to go in. And then the rabbit hole go even deeper, but I'm trying to, Teach y'all to fuck a night. Somebody say, what about her mama, Sissy Houston? I hear y'all. It's the what about Sissy Houston? Was she part of the, 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 the sad, did she know what, what was going on so-so? Sissy Houston was part of that business. She, she used to sing background for Elvis fucking Presley. Huh. And, and Sissy know what's up. She you have to make hers too. Put it together. Sissy Houston, she was part of the business. So she know how things work. So when you ask me about Whitney Houston's mama, sissy, the thing is, she already knew that, that, that you know what I'm saying, that, that Whitney Houston would be a blood sacrifice. She knew this. She just didn't know when it was going to happen. She already knew. She ain't know when it was going to go down. Come on, y'all. Y'all better hear me tonight. And there's some other, you know, some of them other family members, they knew what the fucker was up as well. In other words, they put Whitney Houston in the pot to be boiled. Just like you, you put rice in the motherfucking water so you can boil it so it can cook. I need them family members threw it right to her boiling point. Threw it right to the pot to be boiled. They threw it to the motherfucker wolves. Some of them family members, uh-huh. Look at them. Hey, you better understand what I'm saying tonight. This rabbit hole go deeper than what you motherfucker know. Huh, look at your neighbor, look at yourself and say the shit will go deep than what you will ever know. When Whitney Houston died, they had two ancient Egyptian sarcophaguses outside of her funeral. Y'all know what Egyptian what sarcophaguses is? They kind of look like coffins. The Egyptian sarcophaguses were there. Somebody say, why was these, you know what I'm saying? sarcophaguses at her funeral. They were there because it was a ritual done on Whitney Houston's body. That's right, y'all. Some of our people die, and, and some most of these people that die in the industry, they, their bodies are used to, to, 
for, for rituals to be performed on their bodies. Huh? But Whitney Houston, she was ancient. I said she was an ancient bitch. You better hear me tonight. Even when Whitney Houston was singing and when she acted in different movies, I'm trying to teach you. Whitney Houston was taking part in rituals without even being aware of it. Just like uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, the singer Aaliyah. When she did that movie, Queen of the Damned, she was taking part of a ritual and didn't even know that she was taking part of a ritual. When Whitney Houston did that bodyguard movie, it was rituals done on her. I'm telling y'all this rabbit hole go deeper. And when she died, it was rituals done on her body. Sometimes we looking at these different movies uh huh, and, and we don't understand that these are rituals being taken place in these movies. Who I'm trying to teach y'all that the rabbit hole go deeper. I might have to come back and really break it down, but I'm going to leave it right there for, you know, so y'all can think about it. And then y'all can leave y'all comments under this video. Murder by numbers. Let's see what we get. Because folks have been asking me, they say, so, so, do you think she was a blood sacrifice, honey? And I'm going to say allegedly, but my heart knows. I done did shit, the readings and different things, and I see certain things that just pop out like a motherfucking sore thumb. You better believe it. Murder by numbers. Let's see what we get y'all. Whitney Houston died February the 11th, 2012. Two plus one plus one plus two plus one plus two equals what? It equal to nine. I said two plus one plus one plus two plus one plus two equals nine. Flip that nine and you get the what? That's right. I done taught you well, the six. There go our six right there. She might say, show, show. Where the other three at? Y'all know how y'all be asking me. Where, where, where the three at, son? I'm going to show you where the three is. How old was Whitney Houston when she died? That's right. Somebody got it. I hear you in the spirit realm. Somebody say age 48. That's right. She was 48 years of age. 48 years of old, okay? Four plus eight equals what? 12. One plus two equal what? It equal to three. There go our six right there, okay? When we did the age, we find the six right here. I mean, we find the three right here. Excuse me, I apologize. We see the three right here. So when we put it together, what we get, y'all? That's right. The three six motherfucker murder by numbers. So you ask me, was this a blood sacrifice? Of course it was. And, and, and I'm going to say this right here, and then I'm going to end it. Because y'all should be able to connect the dots. But I want to say this. It was more, Clive Davis was the main person who sacrificed Whitney Houston. We're going to say allegedly, because that's how we got to do it. Clive Davis was the main one who sacrificed her. But you better not get it twisted. It was also some other players in the motherfucking game. Mm-hmm. That's what in the industry. And it was also some family members that was part of this motherfucking game. I'm setting her up. Okay. Leading her to her slaughter. That was in her family members. They knew as well. Some of them. Okay. So for us to just pick one person, this person, this person, honey, we'll be here all day pointing them the fuck out. Huh? It's called behind the scenes. Actors. Okay. Actors. Just to take out the blood sacrifice. So yes, Whitney Houston was definitely, we gonna say allegedly, a blood sacrifice. Y'all be good, and I will be back.